My name is Monica Gleberman, and you're listening to Silence on Set Podcast. On today's podcast, we're talking to one of the cast members of American Fiction, which confronts our culture's obsession with reducing people to outrageous stereotypes. Jeffrey Wright stars as Monk, a frustrated novelist who's fed up with the establishment profiting from black entertainment that relies on tired and offensive tropes. To prove his point, Monk uses a pen name to write an outlandish, quote, black book of his own, a book that propels him into the heart and hypocrisy and madness that he claims to disdain. So to talk about why this film is so important and what it was like working with Jeffrey Wright, we have Tracy Ellis Ross who plays his sister in the film, on today to discuss the film, help us break down some of the themes, and of course go over why this film is so important, especially right now. So here is Tracy Ellis Ross. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. You look beautiful every time I interview you, and you always look so different with your style. I love it today. Thank you. Thank you so much. I do. I always pick different things. It keeps me very entertained. (laughs) I love it. Um, so I'm just going to jump right in. I know we have a little bit of time, but this movie is so complex. So I'm going to jump right into it. Um, I wanted to know when you first originally got the script and read through it and read about Lisa, what was it that was so important to you to want to play her and want to make sure that you get her story across? There were a couple of things. Um, okay. I'll stick to Lisa. So Honestly, the first and foremost thing was that this woman was a Planned Parenthood doctor. There was something very um, important to me about putting that woman on the screen, even though that's not what her story was about and was not what the story was that we were telling. Um, But that was a fact of her beingness um, and who she was in the world that felt um, compelling to me, Um, particularly with what we have going on in our world uh, and in our country. Uh, also, uh, Lisa represented a, uh, a woman that I see so often in, in life that, uh, picks up all the pieces, um, that fills in the gaps and, um, does all things for all people, perhaps at the expense of herself. Uh, and it was a woman I wanted to breathe life into and, and have, uh, give humanity to on the screen. And then there was the fact that this Lisa is a lovely middle, middle, middle sibling, which mm-hmm. I am in life. And the dynamics between these three siblings, even though they weren't scenes for us to play with the three of us together, uh, felt really special and really real. And then the fourth and final thing was just that I would have an opportunity to do all of that acting opposite Jeffrey Wright. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm a middle child, so I get it. It always falls to us <laughs> to do everything. It always falls to us, but there's a specific dynamic of the the middle child that um that's just specific, and it was written yeah. on the page, and I liked it. Yeah, I think we want to like take care of things, make sure everyone's okay. There's like a lot of mm-hmm. a, a lot of that, so I definitely related to that. For this film too, you know, obviously there's a lot of things that come up in in this movie. Um, there's a lot of discussion. How our culture instills certain things, I feel like, in entertainment, whereas this film was able to do it in a way where it made it an outrageous stereotype. But um, and I and I feel like by showing how outrageous it was kind of makes us look at ourselves internally to say, why do we think that? Um, I think this is the story of a man who is in the cross section of trying to understand and make sense of how to how, how he sees himself versus mm-hmm. how the world wants him to be. It was done in such, um, I feel like a friendly way of kind of showing it in a satirical way, but also being serious because it's very serious issues that is discussed about our culture and things that I think people are scared to talk about. Monk has a lot to make sense of as he's trying to find a way to navigate his career in the face of the fact that the world is expecting and wanting something from him that isn't necessarily an authentic truth for him. And so does he pl- does he need to? Does he want to? Should he? And if he does play this game in that way, what does that mean for him? 
Um, and so are there ways that Lisa is doing that? I want to know if, if you felt there were ways that Lisa is doing that. And then also your overall take on the film, because it was done in such a, it's so hard to explain or like articulate the way it was done, but it was done in such a great way that when you're watching it, the second it was over, I had huge conversations with people. Yeah, it, it was done with a lot of intelligence and a lot of nuance, a lot of facility of language and talking about very complex and, um, challenging for most people to, to make sense of and to understand. Um, but an experience that um, Black people live with and Black artists live with on a regular basis. And so Cord and the book Erasure um, unpack and um, uh, lay out a lot of these things. And I wouldn't say it's that it's friendly, I'm not sure if that was the word you used. It's just done in a very um, nuanced and honest way mm -hmm. that has a lot of humor that's coming from the humanity of the that experience. And Lisa, um, mm -hmm. you know, she's having a very different experience than Monk. Um, and her experience is like many black women in our world, holding all the pieces, being all things to all people at all times. And what we see is that it has taken its toll on her. And that is something that was important for me to also breathe humanity and life into because that's a reality that also exists. There's an expectation from women, from black women, that they will pick up the pieces, that way they will turn the tides of elections, that they will um, do these things. And yet they are not centered in how they're supported, loved and celebrated for that and having a stake in what they do and how they do. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, for the rest of the film, when we kind of like focus on the book and the offensive tropes and kind of like the things that come up as the film goes on, why do you think it's so critical for this type of film to be out now? Because like I said, when I was done, we had full out conversation, you know, and all of us were going, oh my God, I didn't realize that. Or I didn't think this, or I didn't think that because I'm not in that position, right? And then that conversation comes up. So, you know, why is this so critical for people to see this film? And like I said, I'm encouraging people to watch it more than once. Well, um, it's a really well-made movie um, that is about a universal... Um, and very relatable story of how do you um, reconcile how you see yourself versus how the world sees you and how the world wants you to be. Um, it is a story of a black man who is navigating that journey. It's a hilarious story, um, but it's an important story because we are unpacking these things in a way that allows everybody to take what they identify with away without giving away any, uh, without prescribing any answer. Uh, it leaves you with the question. Yeah. And it definitely created for me, at least a safe space. Mm -hmm. I felt very safe after watching it to be able to have a conversation, which mm -hmm. I think is kind of rare in a, mm -hmm. in a film that's talking about topics that you might not feel comfortable with, or some people might, but it seemed like everyone that I spoke to felt very comfortable and safe, which I think is a really amazing thing for yeah. for a group of actors to be able to do and writers for a film like yeah, that. Yeah, I think, I think Cord did a really beautiful job of finding a tone that um, uh, allows you to receive what he's trying to share or what he if, should. Um, after this experience, has anything, you know, changed for you? I, I've listened to your podcast in the past. I know that you do a lot. You're a lot of outspoken work. You highlight a lot of unsung heroes. There's a lot of stuff that you do for this film in particular, though. I feel like it changed me after watching it. So I wasn't sure if you had the same type of feeling as an actor on set, if it changed you at all. Um, but it definitely changed me. <laughs> after watching. Uh, I'm very glad to hear that. Uh, I don't know that it changed me. I feel very honored to be a part of this film. This is a really beautiful piece of cinema. And um, I got to work with an actor who I've admired for a really long time. And it reminded me that it is true. You are as good as your scene partner. And that um, experience of dancing and playing with somebody in uh as an actor is, is all it's cracked up to be. Um, 
And then even more exciting has been the press that we've been able to do uh, because we've all, as this ensemble, we didn't work together. We didn't overlap. I worked with Jeffrey and Leslie. Um, as an ensemble, we've gotten to now gather. And I feel even more honored to be a part of a cast of such stellar humans. People who I feel like I can learn from that, um, uh, are, whose work I have admired for longer than I can remember, um, that are part of the reason I do what I do and that are now my peers. And so um, I feel mostly honored to be a part of this, this ensemble of wonderful actors. I want to make sure I have time to ask that question about the family aspect and taking care of the mom and just like everybody coming together, everybody being successful and not being portrayed in a way where I feel like other films might have failed in that aspect of showing a successful family. Well, I think this is just a, a beautiful black family that's having a lot of real life problems that um, are human beings who are dealing with a lot of the dynamics that all of us are dealing with. It's very identifiable um, to be able to, uh, it was interesting, you know, Sterling and I didn't work with each other at all, but somehow even when I watched the film, it felt like we had, you can tell that we were siblings. You can see the dynamic of Cliff, Cliff and Lisa and Monk and sort of how that relationship and the siblings, sibling dynamics developed. So, um, I, it's a it's a beautiful family portrait and portrayal of, um, you know, an upper middle class black family. Yeah. And I just wanted to ask you, I guess my last like question will be like a two parter, but mm -hmm. I wanted to know what your favorite part of the film was, because for me, there's like so many scenes that I love. So it might be hard. I'm sorry. But what your favorite part of the movie and then what are you most excited for for people to walk out of the theater saying or walk out of the theater thinking? I'll start with that one. I'm really excited for people to walk out of the theater thinking, damn, that was a good film. And oh my God, I have a lot to think about. Um, uh, I hope people walk out of the film seeing themselves and having an opportunity to ask themselves questions that they don't always um, have to think about in terms of both the art that we consume and the art that we expect um, from people. Uh, and also then what would my favorite part of the movie be? Honestly, it's the last moment. It's the last moment when Monk sort of <laughs> nods at the actor as he's leaving. Yeah. I think that might be my favorite moment in the film. Well, um, I want to thank you so much. I feel like this is the first time with an interview. There's so many thoughts in my brain that I'm just like, well, with my questions because it was so good. And I'm so glad you enjoyed the film. I'm so glad. And I'm so glad oh my that gosh. I was thinking that offered questions and all of the above. Yeah, it was so good. And I just want to congratulate you. And thank you so much for taking time out to speak with me and kind of like get through my questions because I just think it's one of the best movies of the year. And I think your performance was amazing. And I learned so much from you and I learned so much every project that you do. So thank I just want to thank you. Thank you so much. This is lovely. Thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed listening to Tracy Ellis Ross break down the character, the film, and help us maybe understand it a little bit more. It's really nice to have a safe space to have an open discussion. And I really highly recommend, as I said in the interview, watching this film more than once, if you can. The film will be available in select theaters on December 15th and will be expanding to additional theaters on December 22nd. So make sure you go and check it out. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you're updated on all of our latest podcasts and head over to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe so you're updated on all of our video content. Mm -hmm.